let's learn how we can create an integrated style monorepo with an X. To set up an integrated style monorepo with an X, we can use the create an X workspace command. And I'm using here as the name of my workspace integrated just to distinguish it from other type of setups. But usually what you use here is the name of your organization or also the name of your NPM scope if this is a monorepo where you have a set of packages that you want to publish to NPM. Now the preset I'm choosing here is TS for the TypeScript JavaScript setup. I want to also opt into the remote caching so I can just confirm here. And so this gives us our workspace. So let's see what we got. So an integrated style monorepo is really all about being pre-configured. So a lot of the things that we usually would want to set up have already been set up for us. So if you go at the package level here, we see the root level package JSON, which has the name of the monorepo that we have chosen and has all the dev dependencies. So there's also things already such as prettier, which are pretty handy. Then there's TypeScript. And there are a couple of plugins for our NX package that will help us develop our monorepo here. So to create a new package, we can use so-called generators. Now in this specific case, we have a TypeScript package. So this is the main plugin that we're leveraging here, which is the novel JS package. And that already comes with generators that allow us to create new libraries that are pre-configured with TypeScript and Jest and some other best practice tooling. So to generate such a library, I can use a command. So we could just go ahead and run npx generate or g give it the name of the plugin, which in this case is novel.js, the name of the generator, which is library, and then the name of the library. Now, if you now think this is hard to actually remember, I totally agree. So there's a better way to do this, which is by installing the NX console Visual Studio Code plugin. This allows us to do this in a visual approach. So the NX console allows us to either go in here and click the generate, or we can even already just right click here NX generate library, choose which plugin we want to use. And so we can already see this, there is a novel JS plugin, which has a library generator. And if we click this, it opens up like a dialog where it can fill out the options of this generator. So in our case, we want to create an is even package. We down here see a dry run of what would get generated once we confirm this. We have here the options of giving it a directory under which we want to nest our library, whether this is buildable or not. What do we want to choose some bundler, which compiler we want to use. So we could also switch to SWC and some other options that might be useful for creating such a package. Now in this case, what we also might want to do actually is make this package publishable because we might want to actually push this up to some NPM registry. And at the same time, that also requires us to give it the import path, which is basically the package name of how we want to publish this to NPM. So we can just give it here my org is even as the import path that one would then use on NPM. So once we are good, we can actually go ahead and click run. And we might also copy here the command by clicking this button for the next run that we need to do. So this generated a new package is even here which has already the TS config configurations generated. It also has already an entry point here to a file that is called is even, which has a simple function. Now we could actually go ahead and just implement this function and just paste here an is even function that takes a number and determines whether the number is even or not. It has already here a jest test set up. So we could just go in here and say, if we add in here two, then this should be truthy. And there is already a matching just config for this. So this all works in an integrated fashion. So in order to figure out what targets or tasks we can run against this library, you would intuitively go to the package JSON. Now in an integrated type of setup, we could have the actions defined in here, but most commonly this is just used for the publishing part. So where we can actually increment the version, where we can then define dynamically the dependencies that this package might need when someone else installs it. But the main targets are defined in a separate project JSON because they have some more metadata associated with them. And so if you look into this file here, we can see here the main targets that we can run, which in this case is a build, a published script, a lint and test script that have already been configured for us. 
Now let's open the build script as an example. You can see the structure is always an executor, which is simply a function that is being called in this case on a Novel.js plugin, and the function is called TSC for TypeScript compilation, which then gets a couple of options that we configure in this way. And similarly for the other type of tasks. So here we see there is an ex executor for the linting process, which gives it the configuration that that specific executor takes. How do we run these? Well, we can just go ahead and in our terminal run nx and then use the actual name of the command, which is build, and then the package name, which is even. And if I run this, it would just run the build for this package. If you have NX console installed, it gets even more handy because you can just hover here directly in these inline annotations, which we got in our configuration file. So you can just hit this and it would run the same task. And this would work also for the other ones that we have in here such as the test here, for instance, that would now trigger the jest test that we just implemented before. So how does the local linking work in this case? Well, to test this out, let's generate a new package. And in this case, we can actually do it over our terminal window here. So I copied the command that we used before with the NX console extension. And this uses basically an npx nx generate command. We can even shorten it with just mentioning nx g. Again, the name of the plugin, the name of the generator, the name of the actual library we want to generate, in this case is odd, and then the options as parameters. We can also attach here dry run to see just a simulation of what happened. And in fact, you see here we get an error because we forgot to change here this to is odd. And now again here, this would look good. Again, this was just a dry run because no changes got reflected on our file system. But once we're good with it, we can just remove it and it would generate a new package here in our file system. Both packages are set up in the very exact same way because again, we generated that. So you also get some nice consistency among those. So how can we now consume each other? Because for instance, in the is all package, I would want to implement a function that imports is even function and just reverse the result. Now, whenever we generate a new package in this setup, we already get a configuration created for us in the root level TS config based JSON file. And so what this creates is a TypeScript path mapping that maps a name, which we gave it in this case, to an entry file in our Monorepo workspace. And so this allows us now to use these kind of placeholders, which look very much like NPM package names and reference our packages locally. So there's no need to actually have any kind of NPM or Yarn or PMPM workspace set up in such a scenario. We can actually just go ahead in our is odd package, import here is even from our is even package. So probably here we would get a number, we would return a Boolean in this case, and we could just here return not is even of X and have our function nicely implemented. Now, by having this import here, we now got a dependency from the is odd package to the is even package. In the next, you can even visualize that by running the nx graph function, or if you have nx console installed, you can actually just go in here, refresh the project list, and visualize the projects here. You can here see how there is a relationship between the, these two packages, and you can even click here and see why this relationship exists, because there's actually an import in this TS file, which NX automatically figures out, and that's why that relationship exists. Now, this also means that whenever we build our is odd package, we want to make sure that the is even package is built before it. Now, luckily, this is already pre-set up in NX. So if we go into the NX JSON, we got a bunch of different things already pre-configured. So there's, first of all, the cacheable operations, that NX comes with. So the build, lint, test, and end-to-end -end have been defined as cacheable operations. There's even the access token for the remote caching with NX Cloud because we opted in at the beginning of the workspace setup. Alternatively, you would just see here a different local default runner that would just give you local caching rather than remote caching. But in addition to that, there's also some fine tuning of the caching happening down here where, for instance, it defines certain inputs that need to go into the cache of the build command. But most importantly, what we just mentioned is the depends on configuration, which defines that whenever we run the build command, it should first run the builds of all its dependencies, which is defined by this caret symbol in front of here. So let's test it out. 
if we run NX build is odd, what will happen is that you will see a line here that says waiting for the dependent project to be built, and then it would build the actual package. And again, as we just mentioned, since there is caching in place, if we rerun the same command, it will be super fast because all of the computation has just been pulled out of the cache rather than actually running the computation. Obviously, you cannot just run single builds, so just run it for a single package, like is even, but you can use the run many command and give it a target, in this case build, to run it across all the different packages that we have in the workspace. And again, if the package has already been computed before, it would just be pulled out of the cache rather than being run. So this was a high level overview of how you can implement an integrated style monorepo with an X. As you've seen, an integrated style monorepo is really all about the pre-configuration that comes with it. So you get much more guidance, usually much better DX via some of the plugins that come with it. So we have specifically seen how we can generate the initial scaffold of the project, how we can actually leverage NX console as an extension, as well as the Nowajs plugin to generate libraries for us that are already pre-configured with TypeScript, linting and testing with Jest. We have also seen how we can do the local linking via the path mappings, and also how we can run against a single project or multiple projects, both by the command line or by leveraging Annex console. If this sounds interesting, definitely also check out our annex.dev docs and be sure to check out the video about how to implement package-based monorepos with Annex.